larger than life He'll give you strife He's tall He's tall, he's mean He's labeling the sheen He's tall Rides a motorbike He'll tell you what it's like He's tall Don't know what he'll say He'll scare the kids away He's Todd He's Todd Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Well, actually, good afternoon in, in some places out there. Welcome to episode seven already. Man, uh, this is crazy. So. Who out there is tired of these Zoom meetings? All right, but at least this is not a required meeting. All right, um, it's gonna be a half an hour and we, we condense everything into a half an hour uh, because we know that uh, y'all have a long day or you know maybe you don't, but uh, we hope that it's uh, um, educational, informative, um, and, and just off the cuff. I mean, it's unscripted. Um, unrehearsed and a little unprofessional. Um, so again, this is BS with Todd. And uh, for those that uh, I've met um, face to face, you know, uh, my nature is that just BS, but this is a different BS that I'm trying to spread throughout this series and it's Brother Solutions. And so uh, week number seven, what we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about the desktop printers. First and foremost, I uh, hope everyone's well out there. I hear things are starting to open up a little bit. I know uh, here in Carlsbad, California, the beaches are starting to open up a little bit. So, uh, you know, time to put on my uh, Speedo and, and, and head to the water. <laughs> Scary thought, right? Um, but no, again, um, and for all of our sakes out there uh, with businesses starting to open back up, that is a very good thing. So week number seven, we're gonna talk about desktops. And um, <clears throat> Brother has a, uh, an array of desktops uh, to fit basically every need you have out there. These are gonna be great for data centers. They're gonna great, be great for uh, panel shops, custom cable, assembly shops. They take the same tapes that our handheld machines do, only uh, the larger desktops are gonna go up to 36 millimeter which is 1.4 slash 1.5 inch. So you can get a little more information on there. You know, just to give you an idea of, of uh, and this may be kind of tough to see for you out there, but here's kind of the stuff we can do here. Again, this is a 1.4 millimeter. Here's a one inch. Um, most of these were printed off the, uh, the desktops. Uh, one, one of the big things about the desktops versus the handheld is that uh, uh, these two particular ones, and we'll talk about the, the smaller one here in a second, but the bigger desktops are going to print at a higher resolution, 360 by 360 DPI, whereas our handheld units are 180 by 180 DPI, uh, as well as this one. Now, the difference, I, I can't tell the difference. I, you know, I'm blind. I can't see much. Um, some people can tell the difference, but that is one of the advantages is that it will print at a higher resolution. So I, I do have a special guest today. He's a very special individual, um, Mr. Dan Cobb. Dan Cobb will be on in a minute. Um, uh, but I also want to introduce my lovely assistant, uh, Mr. Jamie Brookover. Jamie, are you out there this morning? Oh, I see you got all dressed up again. Your microphone's not on unless you're, you're punking me again, Jamie. What? Uh, there you are. Okay, so there's Mr. Jamie Brookover. He's out in Virginia Beach. Jamie is going to be fielding your questions. So as I ramble through this, again, unscripted, um, if you have any questions, please use the Q&A section of this to ask Jamie. And you can ask anything. And, and we've had some, some uh, <laughs> pretty good questions, uh, a little off-color questions, too, and I, that I can't really answer on this web series. But uh, send those things to Jamie. Um, and then if, if I screw up, then Jamie usually chimes in and he'll yell at me and everyone will be able to hear him yell at me. But uh, Hey, Todd, you screwed up by having everybody imagine you in a Speedo, just for the record, okay? You've already screwed up today. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> well, good morning. Good afternoon. Anyway, so let's move on to, to this here. So we're going to start off with the PTP750WV, uh, W, A, B, 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 B,
Essentially what this is, it's our PTE 550W without the buttons. Um, one of the things that all of these are gonna share in common is number one, Wi-Fi enabled. Now Wi-Fi enabled means that uh, you don't need an internet connection. In fact, you can't connect the internet to these things, but it's a direct connection between these printers and your smart device, either uh, Android or iOS. And so starting from this one, um, great little desktop unit. Uh, it is battery enabled, it is mobile. It takes up to 24 millimeter or one inch tape. Uh, this is probably best used tethered to the PC via USB or you can use our apps. And uh, speaking of apps and speaking of software, last week was a great show. I mean, I, I tell you, I even watched myself and I would watch myself again. I know that's pretty bad. I, I, I'm sinking real low because uh, we're, we're, we're through with everything else on TV, but um, we do have portals to go back and look at the previous episodes. Last week was on uh, barcoding. Um, I had one uh, also on the apps that we use. And so I'm gonna go through a little bit of this this morning and then I'm gonna introduce Mr. Dan Cobb to talk about our scan to print feature. So again, starting at this guy right here, um, <clears throat> up to one inch capabilities, probably better used with the apps, if you will. Uh, again, it will tether to a PC. This is our PTE 800. I love this printer, I really do. Uh, the nice thing about this PTE 800 is a fully functional desktop unit. Uh, it does come with a lithium ion battery. Uh, it has memory storage, so you can uh, put a database or include a database in this and pull your labels off of that database. So it makes it really, really easy to use in the field when you're printing a lot of labels. It also has a little storage area inside here. All right, so you can put tapes or any other type of contraband you want in there. Not that I recommend that, but it also has a removable fully function keyboard. And that's really what sets us apart from our competition is, you know, our competition sits on a desk, it has to be plugged into the wall, it has to be tethered to a PC, not this one right here. This one you can take out into the field, turn the keyboard over, lock this into place. It has a nice little handle. Uh, speaking of handles, uh, it goes by the lunchbox. We call this one the lunchbox. Um, so again, up to 36 millimeter tape on this. It can be tethered to the, uh, uh, the PC if you wanna print directly from the PC. Uh, you can use the app functions on this as well. So you can connect via uh, Wi-Fi and print from the apps. Um, and it's fairly inexpensive um, versus our competition. Based upon what I see, it's about one third the price. So it's a great alternative that uses our really tough tapes. And speaking of tapes, um, I did this four weeks ago now, four weeks ago. So what I did is I put a flag label in here. All right, I also put a cable label inside of just regular old water. All right, this one is actually sitting in oil. So again, if, if you're in a very hot, humid, wet um, environment, uh, dirty environment, dusty environment, man, these things stand up, all right? So keep that in mind. We do a lot of work in the oil and gas fields, hospitals, anything with you know chemicals and um, anything with abrasives, again, the great tapes, but, but that's not what we're here to talk about. That was in a previous episode. Um, we're here to talk about the desktops. We have our PTP 900 series right here, and we have a couple of different variations, and Dan's going to go through the variations on that. But again, uh, here is where your tape will reside. Uh, again, up to 36 millimeter um, tape in that. There goes the ums again, and I, I thought about this, and I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do the um thing. So um, <laughs> anyway, so uh, I'm gonna introduce Dan Cobb. Dan Cobb, uh, we practiced this earlier. Again, this is unscripted, unpracticed. Uh, for the most part, we did five minutes of run through, and I wanted to see what Dan, uh, Dan's camera uh, looked like. So uh, Dan, um, oh, Dan, you're on camera. Dan. <laughs> Uh, see, hey, hey Sorry, I was working on a right? project. Right. So, Dan, um, you know what? Uh, why don't you go ahead? And um, I, I, I think uh, outside of talking about scan to print, I think you're going to show them a little bit about the software and how you created those labels to reside uh, in, inside that printer. So without further ado, uh, Dan Cobb, take it away. Now, now, keep in mind. All right. Uh, before we start, where is it? All right. What I want to do is this. All right, let me go ahead. I'm going to share just a quick screen here, and then I'm, I'm going to get out of here. All right. So, Dan, you have 10 minutes. <laughs> All right. And so I'm going to keep this running in the background. 
Uh, Dan likes to hear himself talk, all right? Uh, we all know that on the team, uh, but uh, I think we can get everything here. So Dan, without further ado, go ahead and uh, you're on, buddy. All right, thank you, Todd. You took up a couple seconds, so you might want to add them later on. But I want to thank you for inviting me to um, participate in this webinar. This is awesome. I love getting out. One of the things that I miss most about where we're in right now is the fact that we can't get in front of customers. So this gives us an opportunity to get in front of a ton of them right away, and I get to be part of that, which gives me a little bit more energy. So, um, no, I want to walk through the scan to print application with everybody. So I set up a printer over here, and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and kind of show uh, that scan to print application over here. I can figure this one out. This is my first time doing this, so you have to bear with me for just one moment here. Okay, it's a little it's a little shaky because it's kind of sitting on this mount that I have over here. But bear with me while I show you this. It's, this is one of the coolest features that we found on these machines that we have right now. Uh, what this does is you print a label by just simply scanning a barcode. That's all it is. It's as simple as that. You scan a barcode, it prints a label. Here we have a bunch of different barcodes that are associated with labels that have already been saved to the label printer. So all we need to do is scan that barcode and that label is going to print. Now, why is this important? This is important because Let's say you're on a manufactured line. The last step of the process is to create a label and put a label on something. Well, you go ahead, you create that label. Uh, you have a sheet of labels or something like that. You want your guy to stop what he's doing and sit down and create that label or ask somebody to create a label or anything like that. No, you just want to simplify that whole process for him. And what's simpler than scanning a barcode? So what this is doing is it's doing several different things. And take a look at the label here trying to show it in my screen, here we are. Take a look at the label here. You see the date on there, it says 521. When I designed this label, I actually put a date stamp in there. So what happens is that when I scan that label, it takes a look at the database information, extracts the database information. It also takes a look at the date that's on the printer, that's set to the printer, so that it actually puts all that information in there just as you want to. Now, another really cool thing is, I pull this label out of here, or this. Another cool thing that you can do is serialize it, right? So what you do is you go ahead and add a serial number to the label design before you load it into the printer. So here I've done that with this one, I'm trying to show it right now, but for some reason it's frozen. Oh, here we are. Oh, I gotta hold it both hands. A little bit too much coffee this morning. Anyways, you can see that's the 52nd time that I scan that. After you shut off the printer, it's gonna go ahead and remember um, that number. You shut off the printer, it remembers that was 52. The next time you do it, it's gonna be 53, 54, 55. So you can program it any way you want. So I'm gonna show you kind of what we did here with the programming and kind of saving that label. Okay, this is what I did here. I can't see my screen and I'm not quite sure if you guys can see it, but I'm really hoping you can. I'm gonna hit new share just to make sure. There we are. Okay, so this is what I did here. I created this label design like Todd showed you earlier. Um, this, um, everything is coming from a database here. So I imported a database to this label and I just copied the information from here and I pasted it in here, formatted that design. I did the same thing. So as I'm printing my labels, when I scan my label for TZE111, this is the information that it prints and it pulls the date from either the PC or the date that's set in the printer. Now, um, that is super, super crazy cool because now uh, the guy who's actually designing the label isn't the worker himself, it's the IT guy or whoever else. He designs that label, loads it in the label printer, the person who actually has to print the label just has to scan the barcode. It's as simple as that. Todd, Todd how am I doing on time? Dan, you got five minutes and 16 seconds and don't forget Excellent. to show the back of the printer. That's what I want to do. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm going to switch over here again to this guy.
try not to make that so shaky. So this is another really, really cool thing about this, this machine. You can do several different things, but one of the really cool benefits, one of the greatest benefits of this guy is look at what I did here. I don't know if you can, hopefully you can see that when it catches up, I got a little bit of delay running. But what I did with this machine was I added that touch panel. You don't have to have the touch panel on the machine. You can buy the machine without the touch panel. You also have a battery base down at the bottom. That battery base is optional. You can go ahead and add the battery base whenever you want. All it does is power the unit. Instead of plugging it into the wall, you can install a battery base and print from virtually any location. The touch panel is required. However, if you do want to put a date on there, um, because that in the touch panel itself has, right here is where you insert Oh, you can't see it yet. It's going to catch up here real quickly. But right here is where you insert that coin cell battery. That saves the time and the date. So you can go ahead and save that to the printer. Then what happens is the printer looks over at that database. It extracts the information from the database. It says, oh, there's a timestamp on here too. So I need to go ahead and look at the memory. All that is going on. At the same time, you go ahead and scan that label. It's super crazy cool technology and it's a massive time saver. All this, like Todd said, it's absolutely crazy, the, the, the cost on this. Um, as far as doing the programming, nothing is simpler than using P-Touch Editor. It's, it's just as easy as using as some of the other software that we're currently using right now. So um, that's really all I wanted to show today, but I'm super excited. And Todd, thanks for, thanks for having me on today. Uh, oh, hey, sorry. Wait, yeah. Wake up, wake up. <laughs> yeah, hey, so, all right, do me a favor, uh, stop uh, sharing your screen, um, if you would, please. So, Dan, I want to thank you very much. Uh, one of the things that I do want, and, and, and turn your camera off, if you don't mind. All right, it's not, it, yeah, no, no, you, we, we've seen enough of you. Anyway, one of the things I want to reiterate about this is um, if anyone out there needs help with this, um, one of the things that I'm doing since I'm confined at the house uh, is helping people out there do exactly what um, I did last week in my barcoding session and uh, what Dan just showed you now. And it's, it's very easy for us to do. It's very easy for us to understand uh, how to do that. So if you have a particular project that you're working on, whether or not you're in a data center environment, uh, I had a couple of calls last week about um, panel shops, folks building these custom panels and how you can embed uh, a wiring diagram uh, to where somebody can walk up and they, they can scan the outside of this particular panel and, and see what's inside without opening it up. And so uh, any assistance that anyone needs out there, uh, please reach out to us. Uh, as far as where to buy these things, and, and I, there was a question uh, last week about that. We have authorized distribution partners out in the field, and I'm not going to go into particulars because I don't want to tick anybody off, um, but it's typically where you buy your other electrical uh, and low voltage products. And if they don't carry it, ask for it, uh, but we are in a very wide array of uh, distribution partners out there. so. Um, I, I um, encourage you to buy locally um, and again utilize myself or Dan and I'll show a little screen at the end uh, actually Kelly uh, Swift will uh, with all of our contact information so we are all here to help you um, make this labeling project uh, less painful nobody likes to label you know I, I, I sell the stuff and I, I don't like to label and I, I know that may sound counterproductive but based upon the fact that you know, I was a contractor out in the field and, and I, again, I used to work for a living. Um, I know labeling very well and everybody on the team knows that. And what we want to do is number one, save you time, time equals money, save you uh, money on the actual consumables. We don't want you wasting consumables because again, that's cash in the trash out there. All right. So please reach out to us with any of that. Uh, how am I doing on time here? Let's see. We got 1019. So I got 10 minutes. Um, from, from the desktop standard again, um, you know, we do have more information. If, if you want to see more information on that, we can certainly send that to you, uh, as well. Well, Dan, I guess your time's up. 
<laughs> Sorry about that. Hey, I told you all this is unscripted. So anyway, um, <clears throat> the tapes themselves for the desktops. We talked a little bit about that. I also want to talk about heat shrink. Uh, one of the things I did last week uh, for one of my, and I, I probably don't have it anymore. Damn it. It was right behind me. Um, so I had a, ah, here it is. I had a question last week about the heat shrink. And uh, I had a customer up in Des Moines, Iowa, of all places. And what he was doing is he was printing off one heat shrink at a time. And you can tell the machine that you want each heat shrink to come out at, you know, 0.75 inches. And that's all fine and dandy. But you have a little bit of a leader. And that's that piece that goes up through the cap stand and the pinch roller. There's another couple of big words this week. Wow, amazing. So anyway, every manufacturer has that, right? And, and it's, it's wasted material, and we know that. But one of the cool things I did is essentially on the heat shrink is I showed him how to print off the heat shrink. And again, very tough for you to tell on here. Damn it, I hate this lighting. Um, but what I've done is I, what I've done, right? what I've done, what I did is I pulled the information off a database and it's going to print off in a long series. Now, what you have to do is you have to take your snips and cut in between. But that is the way that you're not going to have any waste in between. So. Um, on a heat shrink application, you can pull from a database. And anytime you can pull from a database, it's going to be the easiest way uh, to, to, to save time and, and money out there. Um, on this one, you use the app. So again, anything that you can do with a keyboard, essentially, you can do with the app on this one. Same with the PTP 900 series. Uh, you can tether this to a PC or you can use the app as well. Again, the nice thing about my friend here, the PTE800W, is that you have this integrated keyboard right here. So essentially, you're, you're taking the PC and you're taking every, every attribute of the PC out into the field with you because, again, you can either type them up manually on an ad hoc basis or what you can do is you can pull from that database, which makes life uh, a lot easier. And again, that database can be transferred either through the PC by tethering this to a PC using our P-Touch editor software and then dumping that into the PC. And we do have videos on that. Um, so if you do need the videos, uh, Dan and myself have done um, a plethora of videos on how to do that. Reach out to us, please. But using the database is, is the best way to go. And then obviously to the extreme that Mr. Cobb went um, with the, the, the keypad up top, all right, and the scan to print, uh, Dan is a expert at that, Dan, you're never gonna hear that again. All right, so it's a good thing that this is on tape. Um, please reach out to us. Next week, folks, I'm at 1023. So next week, we're gonna be talking about, uh, Kelly, I think it's uh, 606C. And by the way, um, my 606C um, training modules have been approved by Bixie. So we now, now what we're doing at this point is we're trying to find a place to house this. Um, once it is housed, everybody out there that does need Bixi uh, CECs, accreditations, can go out and uh, take my course. You're going to have to listen to this voice. Chances are you're going to fall asleep. But again, we are going to be able to offer CECs at the end of the course. Um, so next week, yep. Um, is it handheld? Oh, no. Forget it. Never mind. All right, scratch that. I'm doing the handhelds next week. Thanks, Kelly, for putting that up there. All right. Hell, I don't do 606C until June 18th. So you can see on the screen right now, as far as our upcoming uh, modules, the handheld overview. After that, we have the 550W iLink and Label. That is our collaboration with Fluke. I just did a real nice uh, webinar with Fluke, a couple hundred people on there. It went over very well. So again, uh, handheld overview, 550W. Datacom specific applications are coming up. Uh, that, that's me, I'm Mr. Datacom, uh, if you will. And then after that, we're gonna talk about the 606C uh, overview. Uh, if you do want um, in, more information on that 606C course that I did, uh, please ask Jamie in the Q&A or you can reach out to any one of us which next slide, you're gonna have our information, um, our personal information as far as where we are. I'm out of Carlsbad, California. I cover everything west of the Mississippi. Uh, 
Well, right now I do it here from Carlsbad, California. But uh, again, uh, anybody out there that is on the west side of the Mississippi, please reach out because I, I have very uh, carnal and tribal knowledge about uh, distribution, reseller partners in your area. Um, I can introduce you to our manufacturer uh, rep firms. Uh, and I do have a plethora of uh, manufactured plep, uh, 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 rep firms in the area, as all of us do. So myself out here on the West Coast, you got Mr. Jamie Brookover um, out in Virginia Beach. You got Mr. Dan Cobb somewhere in Wisconsin. You got Mr. Bruce Page out on the East Coast. Uh, Mr. Rob Dawkins primarily takes care of uh, the manufacturing and warehousing. So if you are in those environments, please reach out to him. Our glorious leader, Mr. Craig Robinson, is out of sunny Florida. Um, I, I don't know if I should say to reach out to him. He's a very busy man managing uh, our team. But uh, uh, anybody uh, of the aforementioned, please reach out to that. Uh, next week and every Thursday, um, you know, the crowd is getting bigger. I appreciate your time on here. We're getting a lot of accolades as far as what we're doing because everything isn't, you know, regimented. Um, so please uh, join us every Thursday, 10 a.m. Pacific Coast time. With that being said, I got a couple more minutes. Jamie, is there anything that, uh, any pressing questions that have come across since I've been yabbering away? No pressing questions. Um, no, not at all. To, not at all this week, Mr. Todd. Well, if you do have any questions, please reach out to Jamie. We also have a poll. I always like to see how I'm doing because I uh, obviously am a very professional individual. Um, so please take a few minutes to uh, take the poll right here. All right. Uh, Please tune in every Thursday. I know it's a pain in the butt right now with all these Zooms everybody wants you to come to. Um, we sincerely appreciate uh, you being on board today. Don't forget about us. Uh, thank you. Have yourself a uh, fantastic week.